It wasn't me! It wasn't me! No! 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 No miniature painters were hurt in the making of this video. <sighs> like and subscribe! Vincent van Gogh felt it when he invited Gogan to stay and spent weeks trying to make his house perfect so that he wouldn't be found out. Einstein spoke about people discovering his big trick. And if that sounds familiar, you can probably relate to imposter syndrome. But you should know, it's completely normal. What is not normal is when the feelings of being an imposter stop you from doing the things that you enjoy. So in this video, I want to talk about imposter syndrome. What it is, and some of the things that have helped me that may well help you too. So I'm James, this is Rising 8 Minis, and on this channel, we review things, we paint things, and occasionally we discuss mental health. Outside of YouTube, I'm the director of a mental health charity, and I also have my own struggles with mental health ups and downs. So I do know a thing or two about this topic. Given the context of this video, it's kind of ironic I have to point that out, right? So imposter syndrome is a recently coined term. And while it sounds medical, it's not actually a medically approved diagnosis. The word syndrome has some pretty serious connotations and make it seem like those with it have some sort of disease. In reality, it's common. Around 70% of the population claim to feel this way. And I think that statistic is underplaying it a little bit. But whatever you call it, it stems from the work of doctors Pauline Chance and Susan Imes, who uncovered it in a group of female academics back in the late 60s. Those female academics spoke about a feeling of fraudulence that they didn't deserve their success. And so the doctors coined the term the imposter phenomenon. Later research has since shown that it occurs regardless of gender or race or occupation. And sadly, there's no real ceiling to which self-doubt doesn't creep into. In fact, as you become more successful, you're more likely to suffer from imposter syndrome. Pretty bleak, right? Well, sort of. There are things you can do, but we're going to get to that. One idea is that we feel we need to belong to find your tribe, and that we fear that if we're found out, that we're going to be excluded from that group. This goes all the way back to when human beings lived physically in tribes and relied on each other for emotional and physical support. And I've got news for you. We still do. So we fear being called out and discovered in a group of our peers. A fear made worse because we constantly compare ourselves to others. Social media is a double-edged sword. On one hand, we could be more connected than we ever have been before. I can talk to you, for example. But on the other hand, people can exist behind a filter. You don't see the mistakes, the incredible hours and hours of work, you just see work in progress. Or I painted this in five minutes with a spoon. Or something like that. And so naturally you compare yourselves to them. I know I do. And think, I'm not good enough. That is wrong. You are good enough. You may not be able to paint as well. You might not have a million followers on whatever social media platform you're on. But you are good enough. Success is incredible. But it's also a bit like candy floss. It tastes great when you first have it. But after a few seconds, it's gone. Leaving you wanting more. There is never enough success. But there are some things you can do to combat that negative chatter in your head. The first is a bit of a mantra at the mental health charity at which I work. And it's recognising that feelings aren't facts. You may feel like you're a fraud, but unless you're actually doing something fraudulent, like for example, doctoring all your images on Instagram to make them look better than they are, you're not actually a fraud. You just feel like you are. You may feel like other people deserve their success more than you. They can paint better than you. Produce 200 armies a year or something. But the honest truth is that if you're working as hard as you can to try and improve, then you deserve the success you get just as much as anybody else. Feelings are not facts. Just because you feel like an imposter does not mean that you are one. The second is that what we say to ourselves matters. When we're on our own, 
we all have a tendency to talk or think to ourselves. We introspect, but that introspection can be a curse if you let it. If we tell ourselves that we have imposter syndrome, we have it. And if we don't tell ourselves that, we don't have it. It's as simple as that. It sounds really corny, but practice telling yourself positive things like, all right, well, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than last time. Or, huh, I've really got the edge highlighting done well this time. Or, hmm, it's a really smooth base coat. Whatever it takes, find something positive and tell yourself that. Don't focus on the negatives or try not to focus on the negatives. You won't do yourselves any favors in the long run. And remember, you've got just as much right to post anything as anybody else. It's as simple as that. That being said, you have to use a bit of common sense. If you are a complete beginner painter posting for praise on Facebook groups, for example, alongside other much more experienced painters, you have to recognize where you're at on your own journey and take that into account before you set yourself up for failure. It's not always easy. You can't see into people's heads, see their experiences, their barriers. All you can do is try and be objective about your own work. Try and see the strengths and the weaknesses too. You can also ask for help. In fact, fear of asking for help is another sign of imposter syndrome. In my experience, reaching out to others for help is a surefire way to get a positive response and supportive feedback. Sadly, no doubt you'll attract some knobheads too. But just try your best to ignore those like the rest of us do. You're probably going to ignore this. I know I always do. But making mistakes is probably the fastest way to learn. So just try things and get stuck in. If you don't do anything because you're afraid of failing, you'll never do anything. Making mistakes is part of the process. So make them and then share those with others so they can potentially learn from your process too. It's a win-win. One of my most popular videos on this channel is me making a mistake while wet blending and then sharing how I fix it. People resonated with that really nicely and I think that's because we're all trying to learn and we're all on the same journey. We just maybe not the same stage as it. It's likely the best miniature painters have made a lot more mistakes than you have. So I'm sorry to say you aren't unique. We're all anxious, fearful, pseudo imposters. It's all part of the big fun thing we call the human experience. You aren't weird. So remember, feelings aren't facts. If you want more videos like this, click up there. And if not, then I will see you next time. Catch you later.